and welcome to the LGBTQ review where we look at LGBTQIA plus content. This week we are looking at my favourite film ever, My Own Private Idaho. I always know where I am by the way the road looks. Look, I just know that I've been here before. I just know that I've been stuck here. Mike? I'm extremely excited. Oh, don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You men make yourselves comfortable. I'll be right back. She's cool, because it takes her a little while to get warmed up. It's normal, nothing kinky. <laughs> Where is my son, Scott? We don't know, sir. Hey, Mike, how long have I been here on the streets on this crusade? So, My Own Private Idaho is the 1991 American independent drama written and directed by Gus Van Sant. It's loosely based on Shakespeare's Henry the Fifth. I'm no good at... Um... Uh, Henry the Fourth, part one and two, and Henry the Fifth, apparently. Yeah, out of all the uh, like modern tellings of like a Shakespeare film, it's sad that this is not one that we get to see at school and things. So it's about Mike, who is a young prostitute, they call it hustler, and he has narcolepsy and he's looking for his mother because he has these vague flashback memories of his childhood. Him and his friend Slash, he sort of loves him. Scotty go looking for his mother and they go to Rome and everything and Scotty's dad is very rich and when he turns 21 he's going to inherit a lot of money and he's resolved to change his ways and become like a respectable member of society and like join the family business and stuff. That's all the Henry V stuff isn't it? Um, Scotty's whole story. Gus Van Sant is an American director, writer and artist whose work mostly focuses on marginalised communities. His films include Goodwill Hunting and Milk that he has directed. Elephant as well, which is really good. I saw Promised Land, which is like a later film of his as well, which I didn't realise was one of his, which is not as good. But his 90s <laughs> stuff seems great. He said that he wrote the screenplay in the 70s but discarded it because he read John Rechley's 1963 novel City of the Night and concluded that portrayal of the treatment of street hustlers was better than his own, which is so relatable. I really like the sex scenes, how they're done, like still images. Tableau. Yeah, that was great. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it's the same as Obvious Child. Oh, I don't remember that at all. I like the magazine scene as well, which I was reading about and how they did that really lo-fi. It was just like a sheet in front of the camera that they had the actual uh, magazine cover labels on. Uh, it premiered at the 48th Venice International Film Festival to mostly positive reviews. And more than tripled its budget at the box office, which was completely unexpected. Okay. Well, I don't know why, because they're like massive stars. It was considered a landmark for the new queer cinema movement, which we talked about when we reviewed Paris is Burning when we were young. I like the style, the weird kind of avant-garde style. Especially at the beginning with like all the like clouds going really fast and stuff. Obviously, it's not like CGI or anything. It's like quite low budget, so it just has like this really odd feel throughout the campfire scene. There's like lots of stuff about that. If I had a normal family and a good upbringing, then I would have been a well-adjusted person. Depends on what you call normal. Well, you know, normal like like a mom and a dad and a dog. So you didn't have a normal dog. It was like written majoritively by River Phoenix and he's asked it to be like the last scene shot and I think it was like four pages originally and he changed it to like eight and made it so that the character was definitively gay and that he said he was in love with Keanu Reeves' character. I really like their friendship as a thing, really nice. When the bike breaks down, I like that scene as a good example mm. of being buddies, it's nice. Oh, I meant in real life. I like their real life friendship. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. But yeah, it comes across on screen really well. Yeah, they both wanted to do the film if the other did the film. So they like were paranoid that the other wouldn't do it. So they promised each other and shook hands that they would. There's a story about Keanu Reeves 
delivering the script to River Phoenix because his agents wouldn't give it to him or something. So he drove down from Canada to hand deliver the script. It just seems wild that he would have to do that. So when did you first see this film? Maybe 15 or 16, or well, maybe uh, maybe like 14, between 14 and 16. Why did you see it? I really like River Phoenix, yeah, that I'm... film. I was leading a very different secret life to the life of actual 14 to 16 year old Beth, I think. So I'm just trying to think was like, it wasn't like a film that was like passed about in friendship groups and stuff. I, I'm just curious about how you would come across it. I like to know absolutely everything about anything that I like. So if I liked River Phoenix, I would know everything that he had been in and all of his movements for his short lifetime. The story is great, but the narrative is great. The acting is great. The like avant-garde stuff is weird and great. The tableau sex scenes are great. The hair is great. The fashion is great, which is a weird thing to say because they're homeless, but it is great. Their fashion's slightly too good. And they're all like so cleanly shaven and like well-groomed. Yeah. And like the best hair ever, especially like River Phoenix. Yeah. It's, that's slightly like, I don't know, odd. I really enjoyed the bit when they sit at the cafe and the other people talk about the first time they, they call it dates, but the first time that they were paid for sex. Although I think all of them weren't paid on the, the ones that they talk about. At one point, the director was going to shoot it on a really, really low budget and use real life. I think that would have been interesting. I don't think there's a way to do that without making it exploitative. It would be like Paris is Burning, wouldn't it? Mm. Well, I think it would be okay to have them like as the other people in the group. Or, I don't know, that's probably still exploitative. But you know, like in, um, what's the one with all the aliens? Where they used all the homeless people as homeless people? And um, they paid them and stuff? They live. Yeah, that would be good, if they did it like that. I'd like to see it in a cinema. I think that would be pretty amazing. Mm. Just because of all the, like, landscapes and everything. The colour in it is really good as well. Like, when they go to Rome, and it's all a slightly different tone i was really apprehensive about re-watching this because i haven't seen it in a decade and then i watch it and it's just my favorite film how strange that my favorite film is just full of white men true i'm trying to think of any female characters i mean i like the old lady that lives in the yeah. theater she's great the love interest for me i mean i can't remember how i felt about it when i was a teenager but she looks so young and it's strange because he like goes to Rome and finds this girl who looks like she cannot be more than 16 and then Bruce brings her to America and dresses her up but that's not great. Yeah, like, I don't think that when they're in the restaurant like what does she think is going on because it was just yeah. a he turned up looking for someone's mum and then he like takes her to America and is like by the way I'm now a millionaire and you're going to be like my arm candy. Also, because he can't speak to her. So it's very strange. But those are things I didn't think about when I was a teenager. 4.9 stolen shoes. That bit was weird. Yes, it was. Because for a while, it seemed like they were only going to take one of his shoes as well. <laughs> also, shoes is such a specific thing to steal. Because, like, I suppose if you need shoes, you'll steal shoes. But like, if they don't fit, I mean, if you need shoes, I will give it five sandwiches. Oh, I don't, I don't know if any film we've seen has been given the five out of five. Oh yeah, I've definitely given at least two five out of fives before. Right? I don't know what they were for. Probably Paris is Burning was one. Apparently, I really like new queer cinema. It, how strange? Well, I mean, it's not really strange because it's such a great film. But it is weird that it was like my favorite film ever when I was fifteen, and it's still my favorite film ever now. And I didn't think it would be when I was thinking about it. I thought, well, it'll be like in my top five or something. But it's just my favourite film. It's like the only, I mean, this is getting um, rid ridiculous things that people shouldn't say. But it's like the only constant in, the, in that <laughs> time. That's fair, yeah. In that 15 years. That was what we thought about my own private Idaho. It was probably a bit biased. I don't know. Did we review it? I don't know. Is just saying it's the best film reviewing it? I don't know. I think people should watch it. People don't know about this and they should be watching it because it's fucking great. Let us know what you thought if you have seen it before you watch it now. You can follow us on Twitter at LGBTQ underscore review.
and you can subscribe if you want to get more of these updates.